What is good, guys? No Sleeves 12 here with another episode of Short Side Wristers. It is Tuesday, March 19th, and I love how Marc Messier gets released 40 seconds after yesterday's episode. Awesome. Let's jump into it. Today, we are going to discuss the lame content released today in Hut, what I think about comp seasons currently, and some small tips that I've kind of picked up over the last few weekends of playing 50 big games in a small time frame. Let's get on with it. So yeah, let's discuss that Marc Messier. So he got released, uh, not with the 5 p.m. content yesterday because that would just be way too easy, but he got released a little bit afterwards. So we finally have a new monthly legend. I've been saying it for weeks now. I thought it'd be Messier. It made sense considering there was 196 legend that had not been released yet. Uh, it, just, it just made sense. So uh, if you weren't one of the people like me who cashed in, or didn't cash in all of their current monthly cards and weren't quite at the 65 times one, which is um, the the one where you got to have 25 monthly collectibles. You got a Marc Messier. If you were like me, you're just short. So that's fantastic. I uh, was four short yesterday, so I'll get him tonight. That was a little annoying, but he takes care of a center problem. I was actually running into this recently with my... Again, I have a very good team. But center was a little weak. Not weak, but just kind of lame and boring outside of Gretzky I had uh, the Forsberg on my second line and then uh, the 95 Marcel Dion I just didn't like him all that much to be honest with you at least at center so Messi has got 97 faceoff rating kind of poo synergies no burner uh, but he is fast big good shot honestly a great defenseman if you didn't need a center but uh, he's gonna be he's gonna be one of the best centermen just because of his faceoffs being 97 so uh, he's gonna lock in probably my second line center just because you know makes it even easier I do need to say this about face-offs, though, guys. Don't get super hung up on if someone has one better face-off than another player, like or if they're close in rating. Uh, for the most part, if you know the counter, you're going to win the draw unless you're like 20 face-off points below. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Learn the counters, things like that. If you need help and you need to know, there's a lot of good videos out there. If you want to shoot me a DM and you know want to know how to beat the tie-up, I can show you guys that, or I can make a video, I guess, in a little while. But... Regardless, uh, just learning the counters makes uh, the faceoff stack kind of null and void at this point when you have everyone who has at least a decent faceoff rating. Let's talk about today's content for March 19th. We got the primetime 91 March or so with two to BU, so that's kind of cool. Uh, we got the 86 Connor, the 83 Smith, the 81 Edler, and then Milestone 88 Logan Couture, my boy. So nothing good. That also leads me to my next thing. Cop Season Rewards came today, so congrats. You got more Ultimate Team Packs. Or sorry, you got more Ultimate Packs, which are a huge joke, so much of a joke, that I made on Twitch. My newest emote is Pack Face, which is a super disappointed look from your yours truly, No Sleeps 12. Yeah, let's talk Comp Seasons real quick. I don't want to say they're mailing it in. Because, to be honest, uh, after seeing, you know, behind the scenes over this last year, this game, at least from being a game changer, you know, resources get spread thin, especially around, uh, you know, after January when they got to work on NHL 20. Uh, but still, they've done a fantastic job at updating this game and trying to make it as relevant and, and update it in a good spot as they can. Uh, obviously, with some bad feedback, some, some things have had met with bad feedback, especially this last month. But, regardless... It just seems that after the GWC news, a lot obviously they had to put some time and effort into that. These comp seasons, though, man, like I don't know how difficult it would be to have Team of the Year launch and well launch correctly first of all with the players that have their having the rating they should, like a ninety-seven point ninety-five Kachuk. But regardless, have a Team of the Year comp season with Team of the Year rewards to give us a comp season. To go along with the Hut Champs and the GWC qualifiers that give you more Hut packs than you or ultimate packs than you could ever want, um, they none of those can actually pack you a Team of the Year card. So like, there is legit. If you're spending money in this game, I've said it all season long. If there's a gimmick pack, don't buy it. And by gimmick pack, I mean like when the Halloween rewards and all that stuff came out. Don't buy it. Buy gold pluses. Okay, just gold pluses. Now is the time to switch. Buy nothing but Team of the Year packs. They are expensive. You will get crap in them. But you have no chance at pulling an endgame card at this point. So fantastic. If you ripped 50 bucks of, of gold plus packs today, you have a chance at a 91 March or so. 
Like, I would rather rip two Team of the Year packs and hopefully land a McDavid. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's the same thing. Although, although those pack cards are, are just so trash. Anyways. But, yeah, like, I don't get why they're not putting a Team of the Year comp season. I pray to God when the uh, the Team of the Year comes out on Wednesday, tomorrow, a new Team of the Year is coming. I, I'm want, First, I'm curious to see if they do the leaked Team of the Year first because – um whether to get out of the way if you guys didn't hear uh yesterday i talked about the leaked team of the year the full team of the year got released uh in comp C or in uh in um uh the offline challenge the team of the week someone actually got matched in with next week's team of the week it was all north americans which was odd so maybe they do the europeans tomorrow i have no idea but regardless um we're going to get probably the North American one, the one that was leaked tomorrow. That one's got the 99K, 99 Crosby, 99 Goudreau, as well as the Morgan Riley and Brent Burns, among others, obviously. But why not have a comp season that allows us to get packs for the main event? I mean, pack pulls are so low anyways, it's not even going to hurt the market, to be honest with you. Like, I ripped damn near four hundred dollars and got nothing like i didn't get one team of the year poll boys like it was nuts man so i don't know what's gonna happen but tomorrow uh if you do love pack polls tomorrow it's team of the year again so from 7 p.m to 10 30 ish p.m eastern time i stream on twitch every day or every monday to friday i'm gonna do another i got my i got my youtube money we're gonna open up some team of the year packs all right so if you want to see how painful it is to spend money on this game and get nothing be sure to tune in, twitch.tv slash nursleeves12. So, yeah, uh, that is it for today's content and uh, in the state of comp seasons, man. Like, I hope, I hope that they bring us a comp season that's worth Because if you're not playing the GWC, say, say you're not, you know, uh, in quotation, sweaty tryhard, and you're not playing in the GWC, uh, by the way, everyone should be, even if you're not going to do well, play your four games or whatever the qualifying games are, so you get the insane amount of packs they're giving out just for playing in it. Okay, guys? If you're not playing in Hut Champs, things like that, all you've got is comp seasons and online seasons. Like, how are you guys supposed to... It just doesn't make any sense, man. Like, why not... This whole team of the year launch, this is my first real year in Hut. Like, first all-in year in Hut, and it's just so disappointing without... The biggest event has been has gone so far, but maybe they'll redeem themselves. Okay, so let's uh, let's move on to some tips that I've kind of picked up recently. So this is gonna take this is gonna get some spicy comments, maybe some dislikes even. Regardless, on my channel I am speak this super truth. I'm super blunt and a realist, to be honest with you. So I played a ton of biggies this weekend. 25 hut cha or 25 GWC qualifiers. I came in 39th, 41st. I can't remember. It's very close. Uh, I lost. I two wins would have gotten me into the top 32 this week, and I blew two games in overtime in which I was leading by one with a minute to go. So that's sick. But again, I spoke about it yesterday. I am Bambi lagged in the last minute of a game in which I'm leading. That's a whole other topic. Regardless, I played some biggies. Then I played my 20 Hut Champs game. Had my best placement, I think, at Hut Champs. I finished in the top 30 for that. So it was a good weekend. Uh, I did a lot of adjusting. Um, my strategies have changed throughout the season. Just trying to find what fits with all the tuners and whatnot. I can't just give you a base strategy video. Oh, I can, and they will help. All of my strategy videos will help because the, I don't really just say, hey, do defend lead. That's going to work the best. I explain why and how to use defend the lead. That's why I think my, you know, I get such good feedback when it comes to my, you know, settings and whatnot videos. So what I'm currently running, okay, is uh, in the defensive zone. Here's what I become super frustrated about, like to the point where I'm just done. If you watched my stream last night, I literally went on a tangent about how I'm just done with playing defense. I'm not talking about skill zoning, okay, but what I've advocated for in, you know, the for the, the whole year basically was um you know if you're gonna play your switch it's fine to play your defense just play the position so if you're gonna play if you're gonna select your right defenseman don't chase play right defense but what's come to pass at this point now is when i control a player that's um trying to defend the weak side winger and the weak side winger is the guy that's open for the one two that's the one where you're, you're you know someone's got the puck in the on down low on the boards and far side the winger that's going to be open for the one time or him I cannot, for the life of me, intercept a puck as a manual defenseman when covering that pass. 
So much so that I'm done with it. Like, I am done trying to defend that pass. So here is what I now do. I will switch players in the defensive zone until that play is about to happen. The second they want to get down behind my net, circle on the boards, all of that dookie where I you can just see. You can just see they're setting up for a one-timer far side, okay? I stop playing my defenseman. And I don't I if you want to play your centerman, I wouldn't recommend just sitting him in the slot. That hey, that's skill zoning, okay? But playing center in the slot is where the center is supposed to be. So if you see two guys in there, or, you know, you want to play higher up, kind of cheat for the defenseman. What I love to do, one of my favorite plays is, if you watch me play this game, I love D2D -D one-timers in this game. I think they are super, to be honest, like, not even used enough. Like, when you get to a high-end team, like my own, D2D -D one-timers are just a massacre. What I do is I kind of leave the D2D one-timer open for them because I want them to go to the point. I'll have my center kind of creeping, cheating up near the line for either to intercept the DDE pass or to be ready to sprint right at the guy the second he gets it back to the point. It's a strategy that I've just like come to come to. What you don't want to do, select your defenseman, start A, chasing the guy with the puck, or B, having the weak side defenseman trying to cover the wide open one-timer. I can't. I don't know if you guys can. I, You know what I mean? Like I am all about doubling down on what you're good at and just what you're bad at, just push it away. Okay, I can't defend the wide open 1T. Maybe you guys can. But if you can't and you're like me, stop trying. Honestly, games are getting tough at this point. Everyone's got a good team. You're playing in the GWC. Stop trying to defend that play. And to be honest, like I said, I had some of the best finishes I've had all year long. And uh, it's just something that, like I said, I just I tried to change fundamentally. Something that I also talk about on my channel is that there isn't a strategy set that will work for everyone. There's not. Everyone reads plays differently. Everyone is, you know, has instincts, different instincts, and things like that. I can't just say, hey, here's the settings that you need to use. That's the meta. I mean, there's certain things like the 1-4, even though I don't think the 1-4 is the best. But if you, I, I've been around top players this entire year, whether my coverage of esports and whatnot, I've gotten to meet all of the top players, basically. None of them use the exact same strategy set, guys. I mean, you have JR Pens using correct-handed wingers, ripping through his competition, just firing stuff on net. And he does it so well that he does well. Um, then you've got Regs, who uses default settings. The Phenom loads into a game, doesn't change his settings. That alone is messed up. But there are advantages you get from using the AI correctly, which is what I love to help you guys with. And honestly, guys, just at the end of this, like I can't, as a manual player, for whatever reason, I just find the puck goes through you way too often, whether you're looking right at it. It's just tough right now. So I would just avoid doing doing that. Uh, another one I want to play, I want to bring up for offense just before I go here, guys. Um, D to D one-timers, okay? Like super easy to do, okay? Obviously, you just get the pass. You get the puck at the point with the D-man. You, you curl around a little bit at the point, wait for him to pull over till your opposite defenseman is wide open. Here is a D to D, or here is a defenseman one-timer that isn't as common, that is easy to set up, and insanely effective if you have someone with a good slap shot, like Jeffrey on. So, you, you take your winger. Follow me here, boys. You take your winger to the far side, the, to the right boards, the top right of your screen, top right boards. Circle around there, okay? Make it look like you're going for a short side wrister, okay? All you got to do is drag a few guys. If you watch that bottom left defenseman, he will get open. He will creep into that slot, and all you've got to do is go basically from the top right to the bottom left of the offensive zone or vice versa, top left to bottom right, and you will rip home a far side one-timer. So if it's coming from top right to the bottom left defenseman, you want to aim right side, okay? Aim the, aim the way the puck is coming from, guys, and it will go in more often than not. So, guys, let me know what you think. I know it was kind of a rant here today, but it's just some things I wanted to get off my chest and uh, you know, give you, some, give you guys something to think about. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Thank you for all the subscriptions. Check me out on Twitch, guys. I got to get partnered, man. I got to get partnered. All right, guys, you have a good day. I will see you tomorrow.